Paul says, hey, Phil, are 70s Telecasters likely to see an increase in value over the next few years? Many things from the UK. Regardless of what comes in the next decades or two with the market, I think what we're going to see is a not only a con what we're seeing now, but a continuation of American-made uh, type products, but and I mean any products, because even if they're PV or if they're an off-brand company, um, you're going to see them increase in value. You're going to see Fenders and Gibsons continue to increase in value. I do not subscribe to the theory that has been put out a lot of times. And again, I could be just as wrong as they can, but I'm still going to give you my uh, my opinion and and why the reasoning for it. I believe Gibson and Fender will continue to go up in value uh, because the theory behind that, why it won't, is that essentially the boomers die, right? I'm being very frank because it's just a very frank conversation. Uh, I hear it all the time. The boomers will die and the new generation won't care about this stuff. And there are arguments to that. I've read articles where people don't really collect Model T Fords anymore, right? Like stuff like that happens. However, however, there is a massive difference. And let me give you the massive difference. That gear is not associated to just people being an age. You know what I mean? That gear is different than even the car industry, which by the way, the car industry seems like it's just going up too. The vintage cars still keeping it going up too. But it's attached to music. And as long as that music is relevant, the product that made the music is relevant. It's just going to be that way. It's it's why, I mean, it's why people couldn't predict, rec you know, what did Fender put out, like a $3,000 record player this week? <laughs> I saw people making fun of it. I'm like, you know, again, if somebody wants a $3,000 record player, it's got a sunburst thing on it and they got the money to do it and they worked hard and they didn't, you know, steal it or kill somebody for it or whatever, then God bless them. Good for them. Good for them. Work hard. Enjoy yourself. I don't know. My point is there's this thing that will always be as long as the music is good. Why people buy records? People don't buy records because... Well, some people buy records because they remember going in record stores and buying a record. <laughs> but kids aren't buying records because they remember that. And kids are buying records. Kids are buying records because good music's on records and some bad music too, but mostly good music. As long as there's good music, things that make that music will be uh, sustainable. It will just, so that music has to die. And here's what's crazy. It's not dying. It's like it's sticking around even harder. It's even, it's like, it's like as they make more disposable type music now, which I still listen to, <laughs> I listen to everything at some point, but it's disposable. It, it, you know, it's not, it doesn't have the iconic value that some of the older music does. And so the older music will continue to make that stuff worth value. And we know what the agenda by the companies are. The company's agenda is they're going to keep making better and better guitars for cheaper price. And that's the other argument. Why would somebody pay for a vintage 70s Telecaster when you can buy a Squire Telecaster that kicks ass? And the reality is, is because somebody's going to buy that vintage guitar, not because the other guitar doesn't play great. It's because that other guitar is a piece of history. At some point you have to acknowledge, and I've, I've said this many times, and I always use artists as a perfect example for this. We look at ourselves like, I collect gear <laughs> and artists use gear. And the reality is there's no, it's not true. Some artists use gear and collect gear. Some collectors collect gear and use gear. I've made the argument. I said, what if I like to play one Strat and all I own is this one Strat, but I own 50 Les Pauls on the wall because I just love looking at all the Les Pauls. Is that really a horrible thing? I don't think it is, right? It's 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 one is I like to play guitar and this is a guitar I like to play. And one is I like to collect guitars and those are the guitars I like to collect. So again, I think that's the same logic here. I use this great analogy and I uh, it's not an analogy, a story. I know I like to tell us a lot of stories on the podcast, but this one was on Shark Tank and I absolutely love this story. I've said it a thousand times. I'll say it a thousand more. Um, there was an episode a few years back where a woman, a husband was a firefighter. She was chopping up the old firefighter. I guess they use these, you know, the ones with the reflector tape and stuff, real firefighter uniforms, the ones they actually have to go into the fires with. And so after so many years or so much time, they have to, you know, kind of toss those and get new ones. And what she was doing was cutting up the, her husband's old firefighter uniform and making backpacks and purses out of it. Then that did so well she got other firemen to give her their, her their outfits and then she got other fire stations to it and then she had people across the country uh fire stations sending her stuff and then she had other moms across the country sewing up these outfits and they were selling these backpacks and their backpacks were like three hundred dollars uh four hundred dollars for a, a backpack made of an old firefighter's uniform and she wanted money uh like i think she wanted two hundred thousand dollars again i'm doing this off memory so if you watch the episode you'll see the exact numbers and the exact story 
she's like wants the money from the shark tank and what she wants to do with the money is she wants to go to basically asia and have them make a mass produced version of this and you know get it out in the market because she has people knocking her off and i believe what happened in that episode which is what was powerful to me was damon john bought her company for one million dollars under the agreement that she had to sell in the entire company and get away from the company and he said because i got to save this company from you because he goes you have something magical here. And he holds up the backpack and he says, this backpack fought fires. And he goes, in a world where you can have anything for any price, this is unique. And I believe that story to be exa exactly what I've been saying for years. A Squire Telly is amazing. I could own one and be happy forever. I could play gigs forever. Rock stars could play it. But I hate to say it, Something that can't be replicated is a 1970 blah, 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 Telecaster that was once played by so-and-so or, you know what I mean? It has a story, a life. It becomes a history. So it becomes more than that. So that stuff will continue to go up in value even after uh, the boomers die. And uh, the only thing that we don't know is, will it hold the same high in value? Well, it doesn't even hold the same value, uh, same value in the last 20 years. The Vintage guitar industry has had, if, it look, if you look at it in the last, uh, say, where are we at, 20 years? Yeah, yeah, 2000, uh, 2000 to now, okay? So in the last 20 years, if you look at the vintage guitar industry uh, on a sales graph, it looks like, uh, it looks like the McDonald's logo. <laughs> it looks like the Golden Arches, right? It had a super high, and then it crashed, and then it took off again. And, uh, and then it's like, so, you know, so, I mean, it's, it's going to be like that. So it's not about whether or not, will it be at the all time high it will ever be, it will have its ups and downs, but I don't think it'll ever uh, go because like I said, it's ingrained in a part of history and that history doesn't seem to die. Maybe when nobody cares about all that music. I love it when people use the argument, uh, that the reason why, uh, they know people don't, uh, kids don't like old music is because they don't buy it. I'm like, that's cause they steal it. <laughs> And you don't steal things that don't have value. <laughs> so this is stealing it. That's my joke back. Okay. If you enjoyed this podcast clip, you can watch the entire episode by clicking the link in the description or streaming it on iTunes, iHeartRadio, and Spotify. You can also join it live every week, Friday at 3 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. And I hope to see you there. Until next time, know your gear.